Your Honor, the plaintiff is an example of a self-made man. Until 18, Mikhail Lezin lived in a small town where in those troubled years his peers drank or became addicts. But Mikhail got out and came to the capital and started working at the construction site. He worked hard for three, slept in utility rooms, went hungry to save money and train, became a foreman, then the head of a construction site, and finally the director of a construction company. Get to the point. Yes. On arrival in the capital, next to Mikhail Ujian was a woman who later became his wife, a woman who does not work in day, please note. Was she a support and backbone for him? No. She sat on his neck and spent his sweat and blood, earned money. That's a lie, Vera. Don't worry, everything is good. But a year ago, there was a financial crisis in the family business Lesny, and Mikhail was forced to borrow a large sum of money in the amount of $200,000. According to the law, this amount should be divided equally in a divorce. And since Vera Luzana has no finances of her own, this amount will be deducted from her half of the property, the only house of the Luzana family. The value of the house will be divided in half and the defendant will have to pay from her half of the family debt, namely $100,000. I will then have nothing left. Where I will live after the divorce? Vera, please don't worry. Don't worry, everything is fine. You all. Yes, Your Honor. Counsel for the defendant. Your Honor. How easy it is to defame a person just by silencing the truth. Vera Luzaneo got married at 18, had a son, four years later had a daughter, and all this time she was studying, getting an economical education. Why in order that after her husband opened his first small construction company to become for him a free accountant? Every year the company grew and spread, becoming a big serious company. Bullshit. By the way, Michael, why were you in no hurry to officially employ your wife? Were you afraid that she, as a talented economist, would gain financial independence? I protest. This is demagoguery relevant to the situation. Get to the point, please. Well, as for the case, I intend to conduct an audit of the receipt provided to the court and I'm sure I won't have a problem proving its fictitiousness. Permission to question the plaintiff, your honor. Granted. Mikhail. Three years ago, Vera invested quite a large sum from her parents' inheritance in the construction of your common three-story cottage. Can you comment on this? What inheritance? Quiet. How what? I built this cottage with my own money, with my own money, there was no inheritance. That is the plain if you confirm that this property exists and that you built it in secret from your wife, and that the house which you are going to divide with Farah in half is not your only property. It doesn't matter. Here are the documents showing that Mikhail is hiding the income from the tax authorities, which was used to build the above-mentioned cottage. I don't get it. Where did she get these papers? You said it was clean. I guess that fundamentally changes the property division situation, doesn't it? I'm sure that the tax police, who will now look into Mikhail Lezin's case, will find many more of his assets. But it's not even about the numbers. It's about the neglect of the woman a mother of two children, humiliate, trample, leave nothing for an ex-wife has become a trend, a sign of our time and this barbaric attitude is time to stop. I'm all about your honor. The case is being re-examined. I'm busy. I won't keep you long. If it's about Pavlyuk, you're wasting your time. It's my business and I'll decide how guilty the criminal is. Vitalik, he is 14 years old. He's a thief. He stole the frying pan as a gift for his mother. Yes, it's stupid, but it's the first time and it's not a criminal offense in any way. The cost of the frying pan exceeds the amount at which criminal liability begins. 
And because of this formality you're ready to cripple the kid's life. You know what happens after serving time as a juvenile. Listen, Andrew. This is my case and I will bring it to an end. And I'll act according to the letter of the law. Listen, don't give me that bullshit. You will act according to the tick in the report, not the letter of the law. Levchenko, were you suspended? Suspended. What are you doing? I'm suspended temporarily. But this is strange. What is strange? You should have been kicked out of the organs. Let's be honest. You gave a bribe, right? It's a pity that the conversation did not work out. I will not let you break the kid's life, even if I get kicked out of the agency. Okay. You scumbag. Hello. Hello, Investigator Vitaly Grishko. Xenia Genadev now. Thank you again for your objectivity and see you in court. See you. Goodbye. 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 Xenia Genadev now. Can I have 10 minutes? Yes, of course. Thank you very much. Don't worry so much. Everything is fine. I guarantee you. Anna Nikolaevna. Yes. Let me congratulate you. That was amazing. Thank you. I'm sorry I haven't introduced myself. My name is Marina, the first the new court secretary. Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. You know, I used to hear a lot about you being a great professional, but now I saw everything with my own eyes. It's filigree. It's masterful. If one day I can be of any help to you, I will be very happy. I am an information gathering pro and have great connections in the agencies. So if you need me anytime, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will destroy you and you. Don't be afraid, Vera. He won't do anything to you. Excuse me. Will you ever calm down? Or are you going to haunt me all my life? Jesus, Gordiev, what an inflated ego, bye. I suggest we celebrate your victory with a cup of coffee. I'm sorry, I promised my daughter we'd have lunch. Nice to meet you, Anna Nikolajuna. Likewise. Thank you very much. Vera, I'll call you. Do you realize you're hanging on by a thread here? I barely got your reinstatement up there. I jumped through hoops to prove you weren't a sadist and didn't beat my own wife. Thank you. What the hell you did to Grishko? Ow, now the scribbler will draw up a report on bodily harm and moral damage. Ivan Petrovich, I didn't hit him. I just asked him not to spoil boy's life. I beg you, stay away from him. Don't come near him. I understand. Then go to work. You have a lot of other things to do, and remember that you were reinstated before the first puncture. Don't worry about the kid. I will handle it. Thank you, Ivan Petrovich. What are we going to order for mom? Nothing will come and order it herself. Okay. Listen. Order something of your own taste. You know the cuisine better. Okay. So Vlad, look. We have this, this. Do you have warm pita? Yes, we do. Bring it and wait. Wait, wait. And oil. Olive oil. It's not olive oil, it's sunflower oil. It's homemade. 
I'll ask. Don't ask, find it. Sorry. It is be right there. Hello, hello, I am expected. Come in. Oh, hi, Mom. You're late. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mom. This is Roma. Roma, this is Mom. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. By the way, she is lawyer. I hope you're not married, otherwise she can divorce you. <laughs> I love your daughter. Good joke. Will you order something? No thanks, I'm not hungry. How about some pita bread? Lad, go ahead. It's warm and fragrant, look at that. It's delicious. You know, when I was a student I liked to order a plate of soup in a canteen. And there was lavash on the tables. And you took lavash. Broke off a piece. You dip it in butter and sprinkle it with salt and then you pop it right in your mouth. Mm. <laughs> Unbelievably easy, delicious. Have you ever done that? Me? Yeah. No. Too bad, you should try it. Thank you, I'm not hungry. Tell me, Roman, how did you meet my daughter? <laughs> anyway, it was fate. I was driving my Bentley, Senya was walking down the road and you know, it was like an epic meeting, like Petrarch and Laura, right? It was like lightning struck me and the heavens opened up and a voice from above said to me, Here she is, the girl of your dreams, go after her, idiot. And you know, unlike Petrarch, I didn't have to suffer all my life. I ran after her. And I took my fate in my hands and won't let her go. By the way, can I call you mom? Roma. Why? Why all of a sudden? Well, as a future son-in-law, I'm quite entitled to be called your son, or not. No, you can't. Too bad. Oh, sorry, client. We have to hurry. Yes. Yes. Strange. I didn't even hear the call. The phone was on vibrate. Mom, you just got here. Baby, I'm waiting for you at home. Don't be late. Roma, you said on the rights of the future son-in-law? Yes. Exactly. But it seems that your mother did not like me at all. So what? But the main thing is that I like you. Roma. I love you. Senya hit it. Daddy! Hi, son. Are you allowed to take me? Will I sleep at your place? No, Senya. I was just passing by, so I decided to visit you. But on the weekend together we go to soccer. How do you look at it? Cool! Cool, Topher Bams. The son sit down. Oh, he's here. Here he comes, Arsini. Listen, let's not be late. The semi-finals are in an hour, and we have to stop for beer. Honey, I'll be right back. Dad, can't you pick me up now? I can't, son. It's just a little while till the weekend. Well, no one hurts you at school. No. And you do not hurt anyone? Well done. 
Arsini, go to the car. Go to the car, please. I didn't clearly say go to the car. And as for you, you seem to forget that I decide when, where and how much you can see my son. Or don't you give a damn about the court's decision? You know one phone call from me and you could be in big trouble. Veronica, why are you doing this right now? I was just passing by. Look, don't tell me. You're a policeman and you know the law better than I do. You should have told me about this visit beforehand. You know I could really just call. I might not call and I might not even leave you at all. If you disappear from our life right now, why are you grinning and not saying anything? Don't you understand that my son is worse off because of your Sunday meetings? That's my son too. Speaking of which, I will soon officially become my wife and he will be a father to Senia. A wonderful father, he takes care of him. He buys him presents. Why aren't you saying anything? Do you want us to offer you some money, sell your stupid room in a communal apartment and buy something decent? Do you agree? That's amazing. What's amazing to you? I've lived with you for 15 years, 15 years. But I still don't understand who you are. Oh my God, don't start with that, don't start with that. I didn't live with you, I lived with you on a miserable wage. So do you agree? I'll come on Sunday and pick up my son at 12 o'clock. I'm coming, I hate you. Honey, don't be nervous. Hello, my love. Look. How do you like her? How much? No, the dress can't cost that much. You spend a lot on clothes, really. You want me to dress in second hand, right, and just look like a pauper? Don't start. I'm already sick of it. Well, if someone spoiled your mood, no need to pour all your negativity on me. What happened again? You lost again. She beat you again, right? Well, what do you mean? Well, can you think of any other word? All right, she got around you, she wins you, just turned out to be smarter, quiet. She made me an idiot. <laughs> She's doing it on purpose to make it hurt more. Maybe she wants you back? No, I don't think so. Well, That's not how you get back. No, she will never forgive me for cheating, never. In addition, she has changed a lot. After our divorce was sharply independent. And she got prettier, right? Yes, she has. But what does that have to do with it, Inna? Yes, it does. You should see yourself from the outside. What? She would never forgive me our cheating, and if she did, that you would go back to her, right? Well, what are you saying? I always knew that she would be between us. I see that you are even flattered that she pursues you. Admit flattering. Don't talk nonsense. Well, then go. Go ask her forgiveness. Maybe she'll forgive you, you old fool. Well, what are you missing in this life, huh? We have to make a deal, my friend. You and I have a long life together. Mom. Oh, Zenia. Can you finally replace this faucet and call a plumber? 
Senya, wait, daughter, let's talk. Please sit down, sit down. Oh, sweetheart. How are you doing? Fine. Okay. And tell me a little bit about Roman. What does he do? He's a businessman. Oh, a businessman. What kind of business? Mom, what does it matter? You know, I was very unpleasant in the restaurant today. You could have been nice to him. Wait, wait, sit down. Daughter. He's twice your age. Well, Daddy is also 15 years older than you, so what? And how did it end? How did it end? A divorce. Mom. Maybe you just didn't love Dad. And I love Roma. And I sensed back at the restaurant that you would want to talk me out of it, but don't bother. It's useless. Good night. Sanya. What's the point of all this? What's this petty revenge for a grievance from 20 years ago? Stop it! Why are you messing with Senya's head? She's just a kid. Don't say you love her. You don't. It's obvious. Why are you jealous? What? Are you jealous? Jesus, Tishchenko. She is my child and I'm worried about her, and she believes you. Yes, of course she does. And she's also tame and obedient, like a monkey. I'll prove it to you. Just a second. Hello, Zaneshka, my love. Roma. Can you get an excuse from your mom? Yes, I can. Let's hang out tonight. Okay, Roma. Waiting. Four seconds exactly. Hello? Mom, I'm going to sleep over at Asia's tonight, okay? We want to study for the test. We'll talk tonight. So what are you up to? What are you up to? Hello, Marina. Good afternoon. This is Anna Sutnikova, and you recognize me. And is your offer to have coffee still valid? Aisha, 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 excuse me. I'm sorry. I need an alibi right away. What do you mean, what alibi? Well, Roma suggested that I stay at his place tonight. Of course, my mom wouldn't let me go, so I told her I was staying at your place tonight. Like, we're preparing for a test. Will you cover for me? If she calls me and tells me to put you on the phone, what do I say? I don't know. Tell her I'm so pissed at her for controlling me that she should call me personally. Okay. Okay, look what Den did. Photoshop master man. Oh, that's funny. Are you an idiot? If it's Roma, you know what will happen to you. What Roma? What Roma? Her fiancé. I'm warning you for the last time. Stop following me. Got it? Let's go. Got it? I'm getting married soon. We'll see about that. 
Anna Nikolaevna, you don't have a face on you. Marina, let's change to you, just Anya, okay? Okay. You said that you can get any information. Yes. I also have some connections, but maybe you can do it faster. Okay, what needs to be done? I need information on Roman Agorovich Tishkenko, a businessman, 40 years old. The main question is how dangerous he can be. What did he do? Roman is my first love. We studied together at university. We were going to get married, and then a new law Professor Ola Gordiev came to us and I fell in love. Gordiev, that's the lawyer you were yesterday. That's the one. Haven't you been told yet that it's my ex-husband? Look, I now understand what the phrase he said yesterday means, that you're stalking him. Are you really doing that? We just crossed pads in one of the divorces. I won the case. The wives, when they found out that their husband's lawyer will be Gordiev, asked me for help. That's cool. So Roman, when I broke up with him, he took it all very hard and shouted that I betrayed him. In general he was always so on edge, desperate, impertinent. I liked it all when I was young, but now, and now it scares me, and most importantly, he does not hide the fact that he deliberately evil me meets with my daughter, Senya. I want to know what's in his head. Here. Well, I'll find out everything I need to know, these men, you never know what's in their heads. Thanks for your help, Marin. You're welcome for now. So where are you going? To the ass's place. I called you, remember? I know you're going to Roman. No, to Asia. You can call her yourself. Don't lie to me. You don't know Roman. He's just using you. Mom, I understand that you don't like him, but it's my choice and my life. Okay. Oh my God. You don't know anything. Roman Tishchenko is a former classmate of mine. So what? Wait, did you have something with him? Yes. Mom. Roman and I were going to get married. We appointed the day of the wedding, invited the guests. But then your father appeared. I loved him so much that I left Roman. It seriously hit his ego. He's very, very selfish. You should know that. And now I think he's getting revenge. He also liked to drink and go out. Daughter, I think your meeting wasn't an accident. And if it was, it wasn't because he loved you. I... Don't touch me. Senya, Senya. I said don't touch me. Wait, wait, Senya. 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 So, I've made up my mind. Roma's past is of no importance for me, and the fact that you are a mother in this past is a ridiculous accident, so let it be in the past. Senya. Roma loves me. Mom, I'm not a fool, I feel it, and you... You're just jealous. Senya. That's why I'm packing now. I'm going to Roma, and you don't stop me, okay? Senya. Open the door. Mama, open the door. It's not funny, do you hear me? I will open the door after you think about what I told you. I hate you, you hear? Mom, open the door. Hi, Marina. Hi, I have news about Roman Tishkenko. Great, tell me. 
I think it's better not on the phone. You never know. Tell me where to come. I'm in your area. Let's meet at a coffee shop in Pushkinskaya. Agreed. Just give me 10 minutes. I need to talk to Zinya. Okay, I'll wait. Bye. Senya, are you okay? Senya, please forgive me. I had no other choice. You can go by yourself later. Senya, let's talk normally. Senya. Senya. You retract the documents on Lucian's case. Say they're fictitious, do you understand me? You got that, dumbass? I got it. Let her go quickly, young man. Help me, please. Let go. I'm calling the police. Shut the fuck up. Anna, are you all right? I'm fine. What did he want? Money. No, he tried to pester me. Do you want me to call the police? No, don't call the police. I'll take care of it myself. Did you find out something about Roman? About Roman, yes, of course. So Roman is registered here in Zaporoshi with his mother. Okay. But the actual address of residence is not known. And about the work is a curious story. Roman together with his older brother Boris owns a hotel and restaurant complex that has saunas, swimming pools and here attention. In the networks of open forums is written that these saunas at night work as a brothel. He wants to turn my Zinya into this. Anna, well... How do I know what's in this psycho's head? You have to go to the police with it all. But what are we going to charge him with? I don't know. Zinya is an adult. She has the right to talk to whomever she wants. By the way, a criminal case was already started against Roman and Boris, but they closed it soon after because there wasn't enough evidence. That's great news. We should gather information and nail him. There's definitely a lead. Blackmail? Not necessarily. I'll find witnesses. I'll raise the case. I'll give him a big exposure. I'll put this freak in jail, Marina. That's right. That's what you should do. Tell me, have you told Senka about your past with him? Yes, but she doesn't care. She's in love. So now we must urgently find the address of this Roman. So let's go have tea and you'll calm down, right? And we will definitely put this bastard in jail. Let's go. Friends, there is a wonderful anecdote, which I just love in general. A young woman. You know, the kind of Boris buy me a car, well, men understand me. She calls my mother, says mom, hello, can you imagine my husband does not want to eat potatoes? Wait, daughter, how he does not want to eat potatoes? Your grandfather did, your father ate them, but your husband doesn't want them, how do you cook them? Do you stew it, boil it, fry it? Wait, mom, wait, what else do you have to cook it? <laughs> For saying. Friends. Sorry, work. Work. Um. How much? When? All right, all right, all right, I'll try. Roma. As usual. Do you have fun? Yeah. It's good fun, yeah. Borya. Did something happen? Nothing happened. Nothing. Nothing happened. And who called? Yeah. 
and this, so who called? Yes, my little boy, my little boy called. You know, he screwed up at the institute again. Are you sure? Why, 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 of course he did. Do you need help? Please, brother, no help, it's the first time, I can do it myself. Guys, your hands and feet are getting cold. Hello. Oh, Xenia. My friends, those of you who don't know, this is Zenia, my girlfriend. Let's go. Welcome to our close-knit family. Why are you like this? Zenia? You look a little tense. My mom locked me in my room, can you imagine? No way. Yeah. And how did you get out? Through the balcony, Rom. Listen, I have a question for you. She said that you were in a relationship with her. Is it true? And she also said that you were dating me despite her, that you don't love me. Just like that? Yes, she said that. Wait a minute. Sing it, turn off the music, please. Dear friends, can I have your attention, please? I want to share a very important event in my life. Tomorrow, Zinnia and I are going to the registry office to get married. What? Yes, yes, yes. How nice. Excuse me. Excuse me. Ramishka, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure, don't be bored. Zinnia, come on. Hello? My name is Boris. I'm Roman's half-brother. Senya, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And who's this? That's Toma, his ex-girlfriend. Don't mind her. You're a born actress. And now tell me, why do you need this circus with this little girl? I'll tell you all about it later. But for now, relax. Wait. First, tell me that you love me. Um, of course I do. Tell me what you want to drink. Thank you. I don't drink. Great, Senya. A woman who doesn't drink is a healthy unit. Tell me, please. She won't do anything to him, is she normal at all? Honestly, I've never met a normal woman in my life. I'm married. Yes, you know why I have a short haircut? Because if I did something wrong, my wife grabs my hair as soon as she sees me. But I still love women. Let's to women for nice ladies. Here's to you. Here's to you lovely ladies. Roma. Xenia. It's good that you stopped by. Do you remember I told you about permanent sex? This is a freestyle. Come to us. Mom was right. You're a freak. You're a jerk. You're an abomination. What a passion. Wait, I'll tell you later. Xenia. An old horse doesn't spoil the furrow, and he doesn't plow deep, you know. Wait, are you offended? Offended, offended, I want to kill you, I wish you were dead, you bastard. Why are you so nervous? Let's be civilized. I hate you, I hate you all. You're a fool. Die, you freak. It's always like that with newlyweds. By the way, there is another great anecdote about this. About a young wife. From that one. After some time, she calls her mother and says, We had a quarrel. We had a quarrel, mom. We had a big quarrel. Daughter, it's no big deal. The conflict is making the family stronger. She says, Don't interrupt me, mom. I know all this. I have another question. Where should I put the corpse? Well, I have to go too. I'm sitting down. I'm hugging everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Boris, wait. I'll show you the way. Come on. I can't find my own way. Boris, are you sure nothing happened? I'm telling you everything is all right. You know me. 
I was 15 minutes late, 15 years of madness, and there are problems with my son. I'm sorry, but I have to run. All right, brother, take care. Go ahead and celebrate without me. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. What's next? Okay. Friends, the party's over. Thank you all. I mean, thank you. The night is young. Get up, get up. No hard feelings. Nice to see you girls. Rom, are you kidding me? That's it, that's it, that's it. Go away. Go away. Go away. Sorry, next time, this weekend. Roma, so can we continue what we haven't finished? Yes, we'll continue, of course, but later... You promised me something else. I'll tell you everything tomorrow. Come on, come on, Bive. Volia. What? Tomorrow you'll do it, thank you. I need five minutes. Go home now. That's all. All right, all right, bye. Yes, I'm coming. Where's the vodka? It's on the table. Well, I told you, the wing in which the bathing complex no longer operates. I think you do not understand what level of customer I represent. You think I like to walk around here with you. He wants to know the details, what level of service you can offer. Well, I can show you, come on. Victor, please give me the keys. Thank you. Here we have a relaxation area with access to the pool. Here we have a Finnish infrared sauna. Here we have a massage room. And a gym. Shall I show you? No, no, thank you. Are you sure you do not work at night? No, we don't. Maybe some kind of a VIP order. No. No. Okay. Yes. What? I'll be right there. Yes, Marina. I found Roman's address. I already know his address. I'm going there. What's wrong with your voice? I don't know anything. I'm sorry. I'll call you later. Tonight, there was an absolutely brutal murder of businessman Roman Tishenko in the house behind me. He was stabbed several times. And his close friend, Evgenia Sotnikova, was arrested on suspicion of murder? Are you filming? Go ahead. We are now looking at the arrest of the suspect. Senya. And judging by the amount of blood on her hands. Senya, Senya. And her clothes. Mom, I didn't kill him. Mom, Mom, it wasn't me. Please go away. Stay out of the way. Please.
Alec. Search the kitchen. The house find the place where this knife could have been taken. Got it, chef. Come on. Are you looking for someone? Explain on what grounds the detention took place. And on what basis are you here? You've requalified. Now you're defending murderers. I'm the mother of Evgenia Sotnikova. Oh, yes. You're Sotnikova's mother. In that case, I have to ask you to leave the scene of the crime because there shouldn't be any strangers here. You understand. I'm not a stranger. I want to know what happened here. You will find out in due time. I need to talk to my daughter. Please give me permission to see her. At the stage of the investigation, it is not possible. You will receive the date of your visit. And now in the interest of the investigation, I have to ask you once again to leave the scene of the crime. Look, I have a right to be here. No, you have no right. How did you get here in the first place, Yura? Yes. Why did you let her in? So she had an ID, I thought. You don't have to think. You have to coordinate everything with me. Take her away. Copy. Quickly. Lady, let's go, let's go. Goodbye. Mrs. Sadnikova, did your daughter kill Roman Tishchenko? Was he your lover? Everybody, go ahead. It happened on the grounds of jealousy. Leave me alone. Please don't take it off. What, what happened? Someone killed Roman. They blame Xenia. I don't know anything else. The investigator has a grudge against me. I was his wife's lawyer. During the divorce, he was a real bastard. He beat her. Why wasn't he fired from the agencies then? I don't know. I tried to limit his visits to my son. Now he takes it out on me and won't let me see Xenia. Can I have your comments? No comment. Listen, get them out of here. Get them out of here quickly. You know it's not very professional to call the press here. We didn't call anyone. Well, yeah, you'd think. Why do you allow yourself to talk in that tone of voice? And why do you allow yourself to talk to me like that? Who are you? I'm a friend of Anna Nikolaevna. I see. And I'm also a secretary of the court. Excuse me, but I'll still say that's really not professional is to take back your insults on the case, which has nothing to do with these insults. So leave him alone. Let's go. Goodbye. What's going on? The lock on the front door latches automatically. But at the moment of Sotnikova's arrest, the door was fixed with this wooden stop. The question is why? Well, maybe they were airing it out. Maybe. The evidence? Yeah. Chief! Yes. There are no knives like that in the house. But there is a possibility that he may have been alone at all. Yura, uh, who's that? It's the housekeeper, Andrei Vladimirovic. Hello. What's your name? Stuttering Volia. Baba Volantina Ostashko. I came to clean up after yesterday. Vladimir Sargevic? Hello, this is Marina Kozovnikova. Did you recognize her? I'm calling on a very important matter. Igor, I need just one minute. You know I need to see her. Anya, you know as well as I do that meetings with suspects and the accused are allowed only on the basis of permission issued in your case by the investigating authorities in charge of the criminal case investigator Lepchenko gave no such permission. He has the right. Investigator Levchenko did this on the basis of personal motives. And it does not matter. I sympathize with your grief, but I do not want to break the law. But when there will be a permit with an outgoing number registered in the office of the investigation by the number of issuance of this permit, then please, but I'm sorry. I see. Marriott, this has no leverage. Neither does this one. Let's think together. Maybe we need to put more pressure on Levchenko. I pressed Levchenko. He's stubborn like a bull. Well, who can help us in this matter, think? 
Listen, maybe we should talk to Gordiev? I'm listening. What? Zenka. No, no one has told me anything yet. Don't worry, we'll figure it out. Yes, come, the address is the same at two. I have a meeting with a client before two, bye. Who called? A client. She asked for an appointment, not a scheduled one. Oh, okay. And so, there were eight people here at Tishchenko's house yesterday, with you nine. Yes. Tell me, please. Do you remember when Evgenia Sotnikova left the party? Oh my God. Before everyone else, she made a scandal. She shouted, I hate you. You're dead. Is she the one who did it? And what was the scandal about? She was jealous of him. Who to whom? Roman Agorovic at his ex Tamarka's. Look carefully at this knife. Have you never seen it in the house before? No, no. Aha, let's go back to the party. Tell me, was there anything else strange besides the scandal? No. But you know what? Boris Agorovic got a call and he went to the swimming pool, and I was in our little kitchen. I was cutting cheese there, and I heard him saying, Oh my God, what was he saying? How much, how much? And then he says, Okay, I'll try. But when he came back with the guests, he said he was talking to his son. Aha, uh -huh, interesting. Well, thank you. Sign the report and if it's correct, you're free to go. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Can I take my things? Yes, of course, and I ask you not to leave the city during the investigation. You may be needed. Okay. Hi, Vika. Hi, yours isn't here yet. He's in a meeting until two. Have you seen the news? No, I'm not here to see him. I'm here to see you. Get away from that computer. He's sleeping with her. Who's sleeping with who? Oleg and his ex-girlfriend. Come on, I would know. Look, all the meetings, conversations, calls, all in front of my eyes, don't. So he's hiding. He was lying to my eyes today. And then she called him and they made an appointment for two hours and he told her the same address. So you know it's not the first time. Listen, V.I.K.A., can you find out where it is? Yes, I already know. There will be a meeting here. It's probably because of their daughter. What do you mean? Well, how Zenya Sotnikova killed a man. The whole network on his ears stabbed a man five times in the heart. Someone writes that maybe even eight. I didn't know that. So that's why she called him? But why didn't he say anything? Why, 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 what would you make a scandal again? You're just hysterical on behalf of Sotnikova. Now they will definitely get together common misfortune. My own daughter. What a bitch. Listen, V.I.K.A. Can you do something for me? It depends. Can you record their conversation for me? I need to know exactly what they're saying, and from their tone, I'll know if there's something between them or not. Well, not a friend, but I would fly out of here like a bullet as soon as yours found out about it. No, no, no. You won't, V.I.K.A. 
ask anything you want. My God. Yes. There's police all over the place. All right, I'll try. You just have to squeeze Levchenko. Just... You know how he deciphered his denial in the interest of the investigation. How? You wrote that as a professional lawyer you can apply techniques that will affect the veracity of Zenny's testimony. That's more than enough. Come on, Oleg, you have such connections that this Levchenko will stand at attention, your deputy minister of the interior, remember? Of course I remember. If it were not for your protection of his wife and all this public that you raised, I think the deputy minister would have a more pleasant experience after the divorce. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Anya, I do not understand how you could manage to turn against yourself all those in power. Those people in power, those moral freaks who robbed and humiliated their wives. You always knew how to burn bridges. You see how your self-confidence ends, you don't even have anyone to turn to. That's enough to teach me. I'm not your student for a long time. Will you help me or not? I do not understand why I'm trying to persuade you here. It's kind of your daughter, too. Exactly. What do you mean exactly? What do you mean by that? Do you think that Zinya could really kill a man? I think in a state of passion she could have. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Remember when Zenia was 15, you and her had a fight. She stayed with me for two weeks. Yeah. That's when she had a real, serious nervous breakdown. But you didn't tell me anything. Well, I'm sorry Zania asked me not to tell. Her boyfriend left her, her classmate. Some first love. She saw him kissing his girlfriend. So she made a real mess in her room in the apartment. She smashed her computer, her phone, and generally threw everything she could get her hands on against the wall. Well, you know, trashing an apartment and killing is not the same thing, you know. No, you just didn't see it. I think it was a real rage. If a classmate had been in her way, she would have killed him. Oleg, come on, I don't know Zenia. She's never been prone to uncontrolled aggression, let alone physical violence. Well, can you help? Well, of course I will, of course. I'll try. I'll arrange a date for you. Thank you. Why, thank you. You know, I'm always ready to help. And you can always count on me. I know. B-I-K-A, goodbye, goodbye. I'll see Anna Nikolaevna off and come back. Okay. It was a real rage. If a classmate had been in her way, she would have killed him. Hello, this is Boris. Why are you calling? We had an agreement. It's urgent. But the information we talked about has gone. You know where it's going. So if anything... Calm down, I'm abroad now. I will come back in a week. Then we'll talk in person. Don't call me again. I didn't kill Roman, 
Yes, we quarreled, and I said stupid things to him, that I hated him, that I was ready to kill him, but they were just words. What happened next? I ran out into the street and met Dennis. Who is Dennis? My classmate. Does Dennis have a last name? Dennis Fostrakov. Was Dennis Fostrakov waiting for you outside your house? He follows me everywhere. He's been in love with me since the first year, but we're just friends, and he saw me crying and suggested we go to a nightclub to unwind. You can ask him. We will. We definitely will. What happened then? We were in a nightclub until morning, and then I got a message from Roma. I love you very much, and I have to explain something to you. Come here. You can take the phone. There is this message. You had a fight. You were very angry with him, and yet you went. Why? Because I was curious what he would say. And I loved him. I loved. Evania, do you want me to tell you how it was? You went to Roman after you got the message. But the conversation didn't go well, and then you used a knife. No. Understand that in your case, the only extenuating is the state of affect. But it all depends on the knife. If the knife was in the house and you grabbed it under the influence of emotions, it's one thing. But if you brought it with you, then it's premeditated murder. So I advise you to save our time and tell us where the knife came from. I don't know. I protest. This knife has your fingers on it. Well, yes, because I took the knife out of Roma's chest. I thought he was breathing. I wanted to save him. I don't understand why you don't believe me. Alec. Read the report. If everything is correct, sign it. Officer on duty. Take the suspect away. Well, colleagues, goodbye. Thank you for your good work. You're welcome. How could Sadnikova hire such a misunderstanding? It's a free lawyer. Sotnikova is on the lookout, apparently wants to go out for a plevico, but they don't make those anymore. So what do you think? I think this girl is not lying. Charmed. She gets her acting skills from her mother. I don't think she was acting. Whether she did or did not act, the investigation will show. But now get your feet in the hands and go to the university. Find Denis Vostrikov there and bring him to us. Got it. What about the anonymous call? Does anyone know where Dennis is? I haven't seen him. Was he in class this morning? Aha, uh -huh. and do you know his home address? Ilya. I've never been to his place. I see. Try asking at the dean's office. They can tell you all our addresses. Yes, of course, of course, I'll ask. If anyone knows about Dennis, please call this number. By the way, where's the dean's office? Over there. Thank you. Excuse me. Yes. You're looking for Dennis because of Sinia, aren't you? Yes. I just wanted to tell you that she couldn't kill Roman. She loved him. Of course, of course, we'll check. Thank you. Mommy, mommy. 
It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, my dear. Everything will be fine. My dear. It's okay, everything will be okay. Mom, I'm going to get you out of here, do you hear? Now tell me in detail what happened. All the prints in the house were identified and belonged to friends of the murdered. The houseworker Valentina, her brother Boris and the suspect Avinia Sotnikova. And now the most interesting thing is that only the suspect's fingerprints are on the front door handle, and the rest have been purposely erased. Although all who came into the house were obliged to take hold of the handle. Chief, Dennis is missing. How did he disappear? He told my mother he went to the university, but he never showed up. I... And that the mother doesn't know where her son is, even presumably. She's not particularly concerned about him. She considers him a burden in the cause of all their failures in my personal life. Says that he wanders anywhere, if only not to stay home at night, not to help her house. Oh. But here are portraits of him in full face and half face in profile. Am I good, Chief? Yes, well done. I wish I carried sugar. I can't give you a hinge. Well, sugar, not sugar, but I'm hungry already. I'm going to eat. Later, pump up the willpower skill. So what about the rest of the doorknobs? There are prints on them. And the other ones are fine. Friends, housekeeper, brother and the suspect's prints. So the police came almost immediately. How many minutes after you found Roman's body? I don't know exactly, about three to five minutes. And when you drove up to his house, did you see anyone? I didn't see anyone. The car was parked. What make? I don't remember. Well, do you remember the color at least? Dark blue, I think. Did you see someone in the car? Mom, who could I see in the car at night? Sorry, sorry. It's okay, dear. It's okay. Mom, I was set up right. I'm sure of it. Otherwise, how do you explain that the police came almost immediately? And what did I do to whom? Mom, I'll be sure to find out. I will get you out of here. Do you hear? Mom, I have a terrible lawyer. He won't save me, Mom. He won't be anymore. Uncle Georgie will be. He's the best. That's it, my baby. Mom, everything will be all right. Believe me. Chief, come here. Look. Oh, that's a twist. Photoshop. Indeed, her complexion is wrong and the shadow is not the same. Chief, your eye is a diamond. What do you think? So Alec, get ready. Let's go to a nightclub. Chief, excuse me. Are we going to a nightclub now? Yes, you and I are going to the nightclub, the valley that appears in our case. What's not clear to you, Alec? Oh no, I understand. I was just thinking about the wrong thing. I'm sorry. I can't even imagine what you were thinking. Yes, this couple was here last night. The guy was eating steak and the girl was drinking wine. Then the girl left and the guy stayed. Very well. Where exactly were they sitting? Don't walk around in the wash. Sorry. Here, exactly. The guy sat here. The girl sat here. Whoa. Wow. And what do you have at the bar that gives out such sharp knives to the customers? Of course, you can't just cut steak like that with a regular canteen, especially the steak at your bar. Thank you. Hi, Grandpa. Hi. Oh, damn it. 
Dennis, I finally got my grandson. What are you doing here? Hi. Grandpa. Why didn't you call? Didn't you warn me? It was spontaneous. I had a fight with my mom and... I see. Can I stay with you for a while? You can stay with me all my life. What about studies? You'll get behind. You won't catch up. It's okay with studies. Yes. Yes, we have vacations between sessions. That's great. You are hungry from the road. Let's go. Come on. Grandpa. I would like to ask you. If mom calls, don't say that I'm here. Okay. This is the knife that killed Roman Tishchenko. And here's another knife just like it. Look at these knives. They are identical, aren't they? Well, yes. Do you recognize this knife? No. This is the knife from the steak bar at the Valley Nightclub, where you spent a few hours on the eve of Roman Tishchenko's murder with your friend Denis Vostrikov. Did you see knives like that there? Maybe I don't remember. I was very sick that night. Evania, do you realize that the evidence testifies against you? I protest. You put psychological pressure on my client. Let's think logically. It is unlikely that a person who wanted to commit a murder would do with a knife from the club, which can be identified by at least 10 people. If we are talking about a cold-blooded murder, then I agree that it is unlikely. But if this murder was completely out of emotion, then it is quite a workable option. Let me disagree with you here. The thing is that the action of emotions is short-term. The state of affect lasts well two or three minutes. If I remember correctly from the club to the place of the murder about 40 minutes. So my defendant had a sober calculation. But in that case, if she had calculated everything beforehand, then I repeat, she would not have set herself up like that. Using a knife that could give her away at any moment, it's obvious to me. So let's not make a big deal out of it. Let's not. And I also hope that the conflict with the mother of my client will not affect your objectivity, Mr. Investigator. Absolutely not. Hello? Did you recognize me? Hello, Viktor Radianovic. Are you defending Sutnikova JR? Yes. The case is simple as the palm of my hand, premeditated murder, in an extreme case in a state of affect, there's no point looking for details in something that's irrelevant. Do you get it? Wait a minute, but I... Do you understand everything, Sora? Yes, Viktor Radianovic, I got it. Sora, how was the interrogation? I've been better. Tell me. Did you know that the knife that was used for the murder was from that bar of the club's Dalina? From the same bar where Zenya spent a few hours just before the murder. Even so, Zora. Her fingerprints are on the knife. Zora. What's Zara? We'll have to work out the state of affect version, though. It won't be easy, though. Zora, are you serious right now? What state of affect? You believed in her innocence? What happened? The evidence, Anya. The incontrovertible evidence, the threat to the victim, the knife, the fingerprints. So figure it out. I mean, it's obvious someone's very well thought out. You've got to dig deeper. Listen, Anya, don't push me. I'll do what I can do. I'm sorry. I have to go. I'm sorry again. Sora. What about our face? 
Where are those white 32 teeth? Smiled and go working. I'm paying you for her, by the way. All 12 hours of smiling. Excuse me, hello, I. Hello. I'm Anna. I remember, I remember you. Yes. Yes. I didn't live at home anymore, of course, you couldn't see me. But I saw you with Roman. How you were having fun in your college days, I saw you a couple of times, to what do I owe the pleasure, please. I was just talking about Roman. Don't you know what happened to him? I do. I'm the mother of Evenia Sotnikova, the girl accused of murder. Yeah, Xenia's mother. So what do you want from me? Boris, Xenia didn't kill Roman. She was framed. I want to know who did it and why. I suppose someone wanted to take out your brother. Senya was lucky to get her way. Luckily, yeah. Tell me, maybe he had enemies. Luckily, I did. Listen. Anya, shouldn't I send you away now? Or better yet, call the police. Boris. Were there enemies, Boris? Boris, what? The investigator has already summoned me as a witness to testify. So I will give him a statement that you put pressure on me, that's it. If I see you here again, I'll call the police. Go away. I'm busy with my work. Damn it. Grandpa, what are you looking for? Where are they, those hooks, I bought the hooks. But where did I put them? Did you rob somebody? No, Grandpa, why are you asking? Then where did you get such money from? I took it from my mom. For moral damages. No, I'm serious. I am serious, too. Grandpa, you know how many times she kicked me out because of her men, so I thought... She has enough money? Rich men provide for her? Besides, it's not that much money. In the capital, it's pennies. Relax, Grandpa. Tomorrow we'll go fishing, right? We'll have a blast. Why don't I go to the store and get something tasty? Yeah, come on. I'll be right back. Tell me, was your business originally shared with your brother? No, Roman created it himself. And then he called me. And you became equal owners. Yes. Wait. What are you implying? That I killed my brother because of the business? No, no, I'm not implying anything. But the motive to become sole owner of the hotel and restaurant complex is quite a motive. It's not a motive. There is no motive at all. First of all, I have an alibi. I was home with my wife and son. And secondly, our hotel and restaurant business has long gone bankrupt. In debt. As in Shilky, and if I sell it all the same will remain only losses. Motive. And who are you talking to that night? I don't understand the question. I mean the call for which you went out to the pool and then told Roman that your son had called. Well, the son called, so what? Do you address your son as you? The thing is that this conversation was more like blackmail. It wasn't the son himself who called. The call was about my son's case, as you put it. Yes, the blackmailer called. Threatening me. Saying that if I did not pay, he would expel my son from the institute. 
Is there anything to expel him for? Yes, there is. You can imagine there is. Children are like that. Yes, my sis is no angel. He did all this time. But what does this have to do with the case? I sent this blackmailer away. And why didn't you tell Roman the truth? Because Roman pestered me with his moralizing. Constantly said to take away the bank card from Stis that you spoil him. All built himself out of a big brother. In our family, I am the eldest. And the blackmailer didn't show up again. No, he didn't show up. Yes, I'm asking again, what does this have to do with the case? You better take care of the elder Sotnikova, who walks around the city and pressures the witnesses. Did Sotnikova come to you? Yes, she did. She tried to convince me that her daughter wasn't a murderer, but just imagine, she was a victim. So you take care of her first. And then you take care of the people closest to you. Nadezda, it's me. Who am I? Your battered father-in-law. Don't you recognize him? No, I don't. You'll be rich. Yes. I am calling. Are you and Dennis all right? Has he not called me for a long time? I see. So you have that asshole. I don't have him. What happened? Did he disappear? Stop making a fool of me. If you have Dennis, tell him the police are looking for him. The police? Yes, the police. He got into some trouble, and you're covering for him. What kind of family is that? Your son was the same way. Don't you dare to besmirch the name of my honest son. You ruined him. You brought a healthy man to a stroke. If it were not for your mean character, he would live now and would not have suffered. Go away, you idiot. You're the idiot. I'm listen. This is Nadia, Denis Fostrikov's mother. One second. Please repeat. I'm not as dead Denis Fostrikov's mother. I know where Denis is. He is with my father-in-law, an old maniac. It's not far from Kiev, just an hour away. Write the address. I'll write it down. Lesnoy Village, Street Extreme, House 332. Got it, thanks. Have a nice day. I'll go, Chief. Yes, go ahead, just take someone with you. Got it. Hello? Hello. You, I'm busy. When you're needed, you'll be summoned. I need just one minute. Please listen to me. You have a minute. Time is running out. The knife from the club with which Roman was killed is clear evidence that Zinya was set up. And they did it with the help of Denis Fostrikov. It was his decision to go to the club, not hers, you know? Is that all? Of course I understand that this knife is a gift for you. Any investigator would be happy. We can safely close the case. But I think it's somehow the Latin to rely on such an obvious move. The Latin? And do you want me to tell you what is the Latin? Is to conduct a parallel investigation, meet with witnesses and put pressure on them. If you interfere in my case again, I'll do my best to have you disbarred. I swear. Forget that I'm a lawyer. Think about how a mother feels when her only daughter can go to jail without guilt. Are you serious? No, I'm just wondering. Are you serious? When it came to my son, you were calmly juggling the facts and did not think about how a father may feel. I did not fudge the facts. 
I used the data of medical expertise. Which you and my wife and fate, that's enough. I do not want to talk about it at all. As for your daughter, I promise you that I will handle the case strictly according to the law. That's all. Grandpa, look what I bought for our fishing trip. There's a meatloaf, pickles and a fresh loaf that was crispy. Come here. What? Put the bag down and sit down. What happened? What happened to you? Your mother said she didn't give you any money. Where did you get so many dollars? I earned it. Don't lie. You and I have never cheated each other. Right. You shouldn't have started. Why did you call mom? I told you not to tell her anything. She said the police were looking for you. And you said I was here? She understood. Yeah, okay. Wait. You're not leaving until you tell me what is your problem. So, the first blow was to the back. And the killer was about six feet tall. It wasn't fatal. After the victim turned around, there were four blows. One to the carotid artery. Could it have been a man? Not impossible. The force of the blow is average. I want to see her clothes. And you want to make sure that the blood stains on her match the nature of the wound on the victim. Exactly. That's impossible. Well, you can see it's all smeared here. Most likely she was hugging him after the murder. And don't you think that there's something missing here, here, here and here? Grandpa, where's the backpack? I won't give it back until you tell me what you've done. I didn't do anything. Then why are the police looking for you? I will tell you everything later. Give me the backpack. I'll give it to you when you tell me. The money was given to me for a very important job, which only I could do. What thing exactly? It doesn't matter. I was almost killed. Oh no! What? Vastrikov, stop! Don't make it worse for yourself! Asso lost. My God, who else is there? Hello, Anna. Hello. I agree with you. Someone is really trying to set up your daughter. And what's going on with you? There's a leaky faucet in the kitchen. I think that's it. It shouldn't leak anymore. Thank you so much. Here you go. Can I have some water? Of course. 
and tell me please, did you learn anything, any news? There are a lot of little things. Please? Thank you. Well, for example, the clothes, she was covered with blood. But on the blood-free areas, there should be at least some traces of small sprays. And there are none. And the second is an anonymous call. Let's assume a man hears the screams and decides to call the police, but for some reason does not want to identify himself. What is the probability that he just might have a phone number bought somewhere in the underpass that he cannot be identified? Very low percentage of probability. I agree, if it was a random witness who for some reason wants to hide his identity, well, then it's easier for him not to call the police at all than to call anonymously and be afraid that he will be calculated. But he called. Why? So he needed the call himself. Exactly. And he needed it so that the police on arrival would find your daughter at the scene. And thirdly, in Roman Tishchenko's house, the front door was automatically slamming when the police arrived. It was propped up with a wooden. Yeah. As if Senya could have freely entered the house with Roman already killed. Yeah. If Senya had been the murderer, then Roman would have opened it himself and the door would have slammed shut. Right. But it was bolted in this despite the fact that witnesses testified that Roman's house was always fresh and even cold. And he loved warmth and even lit the fireplace. Will all this be enough for Senya to be acquitted? No, not so fast. The murderer is very cunning. He understands that the door, the bell, the clothes, these are trifles in comparison with the main proofs of Zenya's guilt. Namely that she was taken at the crime scene, that's the first and the second weapon. Because the knife from the nightclub to the house could bring only her. But I am very fond of small things. So I will look for the real killer and you have to help me in this. Yes, of course. What should I do? Anna, tell me who could want to harm Zinia. I don't know such people. I don't think Senya does either. Well, then version number two. The target of the killer was Roman Tishchenko himself. Senya was just used to divert suspicion from himself. Tell me, what do you know about Roman? Senya said that in your youth you were close to him. Is this true? I was... a long time ago. Thank you, hi. Hello. Sorry I'm late. Traffic. So, Zenia, we need to work out a line of defense with you. Yes, okay. Let's consider with you the effect of state. Why? You know, the chances of proving your innocence, to put it mildly, are slipping to zero. But I didn't do it. Zenia, you were caught at the crime scene with a bloody knife in your hand. A knife from the club where you directly spent several hours before the murder. Believe me, there's more than enough evidence for the trial. Wait, what about logic and common sense? Well, you said yourself, if I was a murderer, I would not take a knife where I can be identified by dozens of witnesses. I told you. If you were a cold-blooded killer. But you didn't plan the murder in advance, did you? Well, of course not. I didn't plan or commit it and you promised to help me prove it. I don't understand now why you changed your position so abruptly. 
Because I Xenia. I'm just guided by logic and common sense. We will most likely fail to prove your innocence. But I promise Xenia will do everything possible to mitigate the punishment. I didn't do it. I was framed, Uncle Georgie. I would be happy if it were true. But as far as I know, the investigation has no information about the action planned against you. And do you yourself believe in my innocence, Uncle Zara? Unfortunately, right now, Xenia, it doesn't make any difference. You know, I don't think your past with Tishinko has anything to do with the murder. Most likely he met Xenia and fell in love with her just to annoy you. And the killer just got even with him and covered himself with Xenia. And what are you going to do? I'll work in this version. I'll question everyone in Roman's circle. I'll find out who had a motive to take revenge on him. Do you know that Roman and Boris have a night brothel in the hotel and restaurant complex? No, where did the information come from? Marina found out to help me nail Roman and even the police knew about it and even opened a criminal case, but it was closed because there was not enough evidence. Okay, I'll find out. So I think, maybe something terrible happened in that brothel and the victim is probably a woman who got her revenge on Roman for that. Well, my Xenia just got in the way and she said her up. Could there be such a thing? It could be. I want to help you. Give me something to do. I can't. Anna, I have no right. You know the law and besides, it could be dangerous. So what? If you are on the trail of the killer, you can become his new victim. I do not want that. Goodbye. I don't know, Marin, maybe I'm wrong, I can't just sit and do nothing. You're right, I couldn't do it either. Listen, will you help me, huh? Of course I promised you. I'm sure this murder has something to do with the brothel. Something happened there and the staff obviously know about it. So look. I need you to spend there a couple of days, listen, talk to the girl administrator. She is quite contactable, give someone money for information, don't worry. I'll pay for everything. I would do it myself. But Boris knows me by sight. Okay, I'll certainly do what I can. Great. In the meantime, I'll start watching Boris. I have a feeling that he was involved in the death of his brother sooner or later. He'll slip up. Anastasia Markovna. Oh, look who's here. Hello, Nastia. I haven't seen you for ages. Listen, I know about your story with your wife and I don't believe a word she said. Thank you, Nastia. It's good that you were reinstated. We wouldn't have any decent investigators left. I heard you got the Sodnavoga case. It's terrible. I knew Zenka. Anya brought her in when she was a teenager. I worked in court then. She was such a nice girl. Who would have thought it? I... I'm sorry. I'm in a hurry. I need your help. I'm sorry. I'm listening to you. A year ago, a case was opened for a fitness club bordello. Owned by brothers Boris and Roman Tischenko. Yeah, I remember that. So it was opened and closed. Does it have anything to do with the murder? Maybe. I'd like to see it. Wait! Now, look, I don't see it. It's really not there. And where could it go? And who could take it? I do not let anyone in the archive. Thank you, Nastia. I control everything. What the hell?
Good morning, Chief. Are you sure it's good morning? Chief, I know I screwed up, but that Dennis was like in the ground. He knows all the loopholes in the woods. He dived somewhere and that's it. Okay, I don't blame you. Thank you. What is it? Backpack Foster Cove, and in it, attention. Grandfather first wanted to hide, but then changed his mind and gave it. And Grandfather didn't know where the money came from. No, the bill is brand new without any bank marks. So there's no way to identify where it's from. So Vostrikov is an accomplice. So you're saying he took the killer's money for a favor? Very likely. Asia. Asia. Asia, you. Where have you been? I were leaving. Have you seen Zenka? Don't you know anything at all? What? Zania is a suspect in Roman's murder and the police came to the university. They were looking for you, and I was summoned to the investigator today. Where's Ilyuka? I don't know where Ilyuka is. Let me call him. From your phone. My battery is dead. Give it to me. Here. Dennis. What have you done? Nothing. Den. I didn't do anything. I'm fine. Hello, Ilya, where are you? Can I come to your place? Yes, right away. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. What do you know about the murder? I don't know anything, Asia. Yes, why are you behaving so strange? When I told you about the murder, you changed your mind. I'm telling you, I don't know anything. Okay, I'm calling the police. Stop. What? Asia, I swear to you, I just heard about the murder from you. Please do not say that we have seen each other. Why? Just don't tell anyone. Yes. Come in quickly. I have a meeting in half an hour. What do you have? Ivan Petrovich. New details have been discovered in the Sotnikova case. What kind of details? The nature of the blood stains on the suspect's clothes. The wooden stopper under the door of the dead man's house. The anonymous call to the police. In general, there are some inconsistencies in all this, which indicate that Sotnikova is being set up. I'm working out all the possibilities now. Wait, wait. She was found on the corpse with a knife in her hands. She was covered in blood. And she brought the knife to the stomach. Or who do you think brought the knife? The one who killed Roman Tishchenko. Oh, Andre. Listen, you are like a son to me, so I will beat you as my own. I don't know what the hell made you become a suspect's lawyer. But I'll tell you this. If you don't find your so-called real murderer in a week, or if you don't get a confession from Sadnikova and close the case, then write a report. Ivan Petrovich, there is one more nuance here. This murder may have something to do with the illegal activity of Tishchenko brothers, their night brothel. I found out that a criminal case was opened and immediately closed, and now it's disappeared from the archives. Don't turn your nose up at all. Why? Because this brothel was used by serious people, am I right? Don't stick your nose in. It means don't ask such questions. You may free. Copy. Yeah, so that's it. So that day you only saw Zenya at the university? Yes. 
She wanted to stay the night at Roman's and asked me to cover for her if a friend of mom's called. And when was the last time you saw Denis Vostrikov? The same time. He also did such a funny thing. He posted a sort of processed picture of him and Senya hugging each other. Why? I don't know, he is wildly in love with her. He probably wanted to show off she is a model. And he is just a guy. And you didn't see him after that? No. Asia, do you realize that Dennis is involved in the murder? If you cover for him now, it will be seen as complicity. Let's pretend that this is the first time I'm asking this question. When was the last time you saw Denis Vostrikov? Yes, Marin what? Hi, Anyat. Hi. Well, look, I spent two days in their club. In general, no one knows anything. I already offered money to the cleaner and the administrator that you told, but either no one really knows anything or just freeze. I see. How are you? A lot of things. Let's later, Marin, okay? Yes, of course. Thank you. Bye. Coffee with milk, please. This is Viktor Radionovich Frolov, an official of the main police department. By the way, a very influential official. So Boris works for the police? Or Frolov is his nighttime client. Listen, call me for a second interrogation with Boris Dyschenko. And also find out who Valentina Astashko called today. What time did she call? Around 12 o'clock. Around 12 o'clock. Yes, well, I'm waiting. Anna. I understand it is useless to ask you not to get involved in this case. So I want to ask you to agree all your plans with me from now on. It's a deal. Thank you. Yes. The number Valentina called belongs to Tamara Golikova. That's Roman's mistress. I want both of them back in my office for questioning. Thank you. Could it be that all three of them are involved in Roman's murder? Maybe. Well? Chief, they got Dennis. Great. Hi. Hello, can I listen to him? I very much want to be present at the interrogation. I promise not to interfere. I swear I didn't know anything. A man called me and told me that Sonia was in danger. That when she comes out of Roman's house, you should not let her go home, but take her straight to the nightclub, to the valley. Did the caller introduce himself? Was it a man? I think so. The voice was very different, though, some kind of machine. So metallic. And you didn't ask him exactly what kind of danger Zenya was in. 
Yeah. No. Why not? Well, this man promised me that he would pay me 3,000 bucks if I wouldn't ask too many questions. What happened next? I did everything as we agreed. I waited till she left Roma and took her to the club. She didn't really want to go home. She had a quarrel with her mother. And then all the way back, mom was right, mom was right. So what's next? We went to the club and I bought a steak. And Senya ate steak too. No, she wasn't hungry. She was drinking gin and tonic. And then she got a message and called a cab. Well, by the way, it was agreed that when the message came, she should go. Did she say who sent her the message? No, she didn't. But she got excited or something. Did Senya take the knife from the steak bar with her? No. Why? Why was Roma killed with a knife from the bar? What happened next? I waited an hour after Zenia left and went to the bathroom and took the money hidden behind the barrel. So, what's going on? Why do we have outsiders here? My presence at the interrogation is dictated by the interests of the investigation. Oh, I see what interests dictate it. So I warn you that today it will be reported to the management. Mm -hmm. What a mess. Why did you run away from the police? So how did I know it was the police? They were going to kill me. Who, when? Well, that car came out of the corner and came straight at me. Did you manage to see the driver? No. It was still dark and the car blinded me with its headlights. Although the car seemed to me to be blue, so dark blue. I noticed it when it passed under the lights. Blue? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. A blue car. Zenia said she saw one just like it near Roman's house. But there are a lot of blue cars. But it's not a coincidence, I'm sure. All right, let's say it's the same car. The killers. Perhaps what we have here is that the criminal calls Zenia to Roman by text message, using his phone. And then he kills Roman with the knife that was stolen at the nightclub. Then he goes back to his car and makes sure Zenia is there. So he calls the police. It all adds up. And then he goes back to the nightclub. That's right. By that time, Dennis had already taken the money and waited for an hour. And that's about how long it took the killer to get to the club. Then he goes after Dennis to kill him. To kill him as a witness and take the money, of course. But the hit and run doesn't work because Dennis manages to get away. Well, it's a slender version. Yes. But it's very complicated. If someone wanted to eliminate Roman, I do not think that he would have started all this garden and would have just hired a hitman to take revenge on Zenya. As it turns out, she has no serious enemies for that. One second, you're having a promenade, aren't you? You've lost your sense of smell. Listen. Don't, Andre, don't react to provocation. Who now, tomorrow, Valentina? Boris, would you like to be present? I would like to. 
but I'd rather wait in the cafe. I'm afraid this Grishko will rat and you might get in trouble. And I don't want that. Yes! Permit me, comrade, lieutenant, colonel, come in! Investigator Levchenko has just broken the law once again. Who do you think was just present at the interrogation on the murder of Roman Tishkenko? What kind of calls are these that I have to run back and forth like a boy? Have a seat. What is it? It's not what, it's who, it's you. And next to you is Frolov Viktor Radionovic. Have you been following me? Not you, but Frolov. And not us, but the Department of Internal Affairs. He is under investigation and I think he will answer for himself. But I'm afraid he will make you a scapegoat. So I'd like to hear your story for Sand, so to speak. Tell me, was Viktor Frolov a client of your nightclub? Frolov just rented our sauna a few times. And then you know. No, I don't. He was having fun with the girls there. So what happened in the sauna? Nothing happened. They agreed all the time. It's just that Frolov is a married man. He occupies such a position. You understand why. Why did you meet with him? I gave him the number of the card where I dropped the money. What money? The night my brother Roman was killed. I really got a call. I went to the pool. The blackmailer called me, but not about my son but about the videos from our sauna. I demanded money. I sent him away. And he said that if he sends journalists these videos, then my own customers will bury me themselves. What was I supposed to do? I transferred the money, called Frolov and explained everything. He told me to give him his card number and he would find out who the fuck he was. Why didn't you tell Roman about the blackmailer? Just about six months ago, Frolov helped us close a case that was open against us. After that, Roman said that we are done with the sauna with these hourly rates, with all this, because the profits capex. But the problems are big. And then 10 days later he called. Who is he? Frolov? Called and demanded to give him the sauna again, with special service. I knew that Roman would be against it 100%. Therefore, without his consent, took the keys and handed Frolov, and arranged that they would organize everything. And then I got everything together. Who's on these videos at the blackmailer? That they're Frolov. Tell me, was the caller, I mean the blackmailer, a man? No. It's not clear. It was some kind of converted, 
some kind of encrypted metal. Yes, 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 metallic like that. What the fuck are you doing again? You were given a murder case. So deal with it. And Frolov will be dealt with who needs to deal with. Do you believe it yourself? None of your business. One more time you'll be fired under the article abuse of power. Dismissed. Any good news? There's bad news. In general, this whole story with the night brothel has nothing to do with Roman's murder. The motives are different. If we understand them, we'll find the perpetrator. Any options? Unfortunately, yes. Why unfortunately? The thing is that Boris, Tamara and other friends of Roman have 100% alibi. There's no one to take revenge on Sonia either. The conclusion is that all this complex multi-track scheme is designed for one particular person, for you. The murderer has calculated everything. Even that Sonia most likely will sooner try to put in jail, since influential Frolov is involved in the case. But the purpose of the murderer is not to put your daughter in jail and crush you morally to make you feel helpless. Anna, Anna, listen to me. I believe that the murderer must be sought among your enemies. You have no idea how many ex-husbands of my clients want to get even with me. Well, I'll have to pull up all your archives, personal files. That will take a lot of time. I personally do not see any other option. I will connect Alec. By the way, if your Marina can help, it will be very good. I'll ask her and part of the cases in my computer at home. And I want to ask you something. Be as careful as possible. The psycho is clearly dangerous. I can walk you out, by the way. Yes, I have a car. I'd love to take you for a ride to bed, if you don't mind. Okay, thank you for helping me. You're welcome. Thanks again for seeing me off. Did you close the door? Of course. Here you go. Anna, don't touch anything here with your hands. Okay. The house is clean, no one's here. And what does that mean? It's a scarecrow action. This psychopath is not enough suffering for your daughter, so he tries to intimidate you. Tell me, do you happen to have gloves and a bag? Yes, right now. Although I doubt there are any fingers on this glass.
Look, maybe some of these will suit you. One glove. One, okay. Andrew, tell me, can I ask you to stay? You know after that, even if you kick me out, I still wouldn't leave. How about dinner then? I can make a light tuna salad for example. That's not necessary at all. I have a frozen steak. I can defrost it and fry it. Steak? Yes. Steak is good. Okay, steak. What a fragile life. Just a few days ago I felt calm and confident, and now the earth is falling out from under my feet. I know what you mean. Exactly the same fear I experienced a few years ago when I divorced Gordiv. I almost lost Senya then. What do you mean? Gordiv did not want to give me a divorce, tried to keep me by any means, tried to prove that I was nothing without him. And I really did not finish college. No education, no money. I was in despair. He cheated on me. I tried to forgive him. I could not. We divorced and he tried to take my child from me. And how? You know Zenka grew up as a pretty willful girl. She didn't recognize authority and could just go for a walk without saying anything. And then one day, at the playground at the nursery, I just lost her, once turned away and all no child. It turned out later that she went for some children, for older, on another platform. Well, and there's a mother somewhere apparently realized that the child was lost and called the police, that's it. And Gordiev sixed the child protection authorities on me. Then made a whole case out of it. Tried to prove that I was a good-for-nothing mother. You know no one could help me when I learned that Gordiev was taking over the case. They all refused. I had to do everything myself. Well, now I understand why you got into the divorce business. You know, every time I felt as if I was taking revenge on Oleg, it seemed to me that the truth was on my side, or almost the whole truth. At least it was enough to crush my opponent. Oh, you know how to crush. I'll give you that. Andrew, I'm sorry. I didn't realize at the time that Veronica was lying to me. Drinking, threatening, beating. She convinced me that you were a jerk who abused his family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It hasn't brewed yet. That's the way to do it, not much. You know, Anna, I feel sorry for Senka most of all in this situation. He's just like me, unsure of himself and terribly vulnerable. I was a kid, I was very weak and weak. And all beat me. Well, as usual, I messed with the wrong company. They were stealing, and I was standing on their backs. So they caught me. Thank God I got a good cup. Cared why the kid was going down. Now he's my boss, Ivan Petrovich Kalyuzny. Made a man out of me. When I was a teenager, I decided that if I had a child, he will never be without a father. I will do everything. 
everything to be near him. But life is life. But now you see Senya. Yes, yes, we see him. But it's a drop in the ocean. Before his divorce from Veronica, I taught him to shoot, to fight, to drive a car. In general, all sorts of boyish things. And then I found out about her lover. So I got drunk. Really drunk. I woke up in the morning. Veronica was all bruised and bruised. I can't forget Sinka's eyes that morning. I told him I didn't touch his mother. I never would. And him? He believed me. But Veronica was really pissed off. She always thought that Sinka loved me more than her. She reproached me that I set him against her. But why do I need it? Anyway, that was it. Well, 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 man. How can it be so well? Kid, bring me a beer. Can you even hear me? Disabled people. Yeah. No. It's because of you. Is it hard for you to do what I asked you to do? Sena K, what happened? Senya, what have you done again? Nothing. He's just messing with me, you know. I just asked him to bring me a beer and he looks at me like I'm nothing. Senya, tell me, was it hard for you to do what Dad asked? He's not my father. Please, here. I've had enough. Let's go. My patience has run out. Sit down. Think over your behavior. Will someone bring me a beer? Yes, Senya, I'm bringing it. Here you go, here, why are you yelling? Andre, I think I will find an opportunity to have your case reviewed and justice will be served. You think it's possible? Don't you? I helped Veronica take your son away from you. I'll bring him back to you. We can't. Until the perpetrator is found, you can be accused of personal interest. I understand. Good night. Good night. More carry. Oh, no, that's enough for now. Thanks, Nastia. So good luck, girls. I would love to help you, but I have a lot of work myself. I see. I can get revenge on any of my clients' husbands. There are dozens of them here. Why this kind of revenge? You could have just made an assassination attempt. 
Why did he get Zania involved in all this? Did he wanted to say something? Listen, maybe there is a similar case. I do not remember that in a divorce someone's daughter suffered a lot, and in general, in my memory, I do not remember that the husband of any of my clients are so much worried about the growth of their child. Although one does have, but it cannot be. What can't be? Andre is very nervous about growing up with his son, but of course he is not like that. Why isn't he like that? He is as offended as many of these dozens of people. No, 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 it's not about him. Okay, let's work. Are you in love with him? Yes, I took a flash drive with a video from the sauna, Tamara told me about it, but she did not know where Roman Agorovic kept it, and I tracked it down during the cleaning, so I found it. On this flash drive was a lot of wealthy men. Roma wants too much and bragged, then realized that he let slip and hashed the conversation, and I remembered. It was unreal to look for myself because he was always around, so I involved Valya. I promised him half of what I would get from blackmail. Tamara, did you blackmail Boris that day? No. What? We did not have any dirt yet? The whole story with the girl. I did not like her right away. But Roma had to play this whole show for some reason. I do not know why. Roman Tishchenko's phone received several calls from a number we could not identify. Do you know anything about it? No. But I had the feeling that someone was in charge of them. On the day of the murder, what time did you go to Roman's house? Early in the morning, I had a lot of cooking to do, cleaning to do. Was he alone? Yes. Yes. No. And who else was in the house? This girl. Senya. I really saw her when she was leaving. And what time was it? At 11. Yes, I went from the bus stop to the house and she walked from the house to the car. I really saw from afar, then I, then I went into the house, started to cook meat, kanapeshki do, pie. Valentina, stop. Are you sure it was Yevhenia Sutnikova? According to witnesses, she was at the university. Now it seems to me that she was taller than Zinia. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she got into a cab? No, she was driving. I don't know what kind of car, but it was blue, dark blue. I wondered how such a young girl got a car. Hello all, Andrew Vladimirovich said that you cannot do without me here, and here I am, ready to energetically get to work. Hello, do you want us some tea or coffee? Hi, coffee. Cappuccino? Nastia, can I have a green tea? Yes, and can I have the black one, please? Yes. Oh. oh, the chief's file. The beating certificate. Give me that. Quiet. 
Why do you need it? I want to find out something. Hello? No, she never even sat behind the wheel. Why? VIK, hello. Hello, Oleg Viktorovic. Called the client who made an appointment for two hours. He refused your services. What do you mean refused? Well, how do you explain it? How did you even think of sleeping with the suspect's mother? I did not sleep with her. We had nothing. Wait, but you slept at her place. Yes, I slept over. Well? There was someone in her house. Someone broke a bottle of wine demonstratively on the carpet, tried to intimidate her. She was scared and I stayed at her place. Well, I congratulate you. Now you can sleep with her quite officially. You can even move in with her. Because I'm taking this case from you. Write an application for leave. How did the meeting go? Magically, the client refused my services. If this goes on, I'll be out of a job. So what happened? He said that I have a bad reputation, can you imagine? I see. It's because of your crazy daughter. Never, never, you hear. Don't talk about my daughter like that. Listen, Olag, you do not understand the consequences. It's like a snowball, when refused, then the second, then the third. In your case, the word of mouth works just fine. You'll be like a leper. Well, if you're so smart, give me some advice. Get rid of her. What? Well, condemn her in front of the public. Say how it pains you to realize that your own daughter was a criminal. Or better yet, say that she is not your own, that Anna was cheating on you. Right. And as soon as the investigation is over, you will take a DNA test and then everyone, everyone around you will feel sympathy for you and your attitude will change. Are you out of your mind? Do you even hear yourself? I will never give up my Zenka. Whatever she is, understand that at last. It's not Anya, it's me. I had a mistress instead of bringing up my daughter. I'll do anything to prove her innocence. Do you understand me? Andri, did something happen? I was removed from the case due to a personal interest. Someone was filming you and me outside your house. And so everything is fine. Andre, I'm sorry. You're not guilty of anything and it doesn't change anything. I'll help you find the murderer. I promise. Oh, you're hiding in offices now. You hear me? I'm going to break your face. Come on. Andre, I'm asking you to stay calm. I'd love to see your shoulder straps fly off. Don't do that. I didn't come to admire your MERS. I came to officially inform you that from now on the case of Roman Tishenko's murder is my responsibility. And I, unlike Investigator Levchenko, am not going to cover up a murderer whose aggression was publicly stated even by his own father. What? Where? On the radio, on the air. Curious. Please. She was dumped by a classmate. Some first love. Sanya caught him kissing his girlfriend. And then she wrecked the room, smashed the computer, threw everything at the wall. It was a real rage. I think if a classmate had been there, she would have killed him. It's not an interview. Someone recorded our conversation. And maybe he recorded it himself. I see you have strange a family. 
Gordiv, are you sick? Are you crazy? Why did you put our conversation on the net? I mean that your suggestion, she's an inadequate psychopath capable of murder. What an asshole you are. Gordiv. I'm. Why are you yelling? It's very interesting that someone recorded our conversation with Anya about Sinia and put it on the web. Who could have done it? Anna posted it. Who else could it be? She hates you and wants to make you a monster in the public eye. No, she just called. She's furious about what happened. So she lied to justify herself. No, this is nonsense. She could not do this. She is not that kind of person. We have to give a rebuttal right away. I wonder how you're going to refute your own words. What? And it's you. It was you who arranged everything. Why would I do that, Olag? And then to set me up again by forgiving me, Anya. Yes. Yes. And how would I do it? Think about it. How? And I'll think about it. I'll definitely think about it. And if I find out that you have anything to do with it, I'll tell you. And what will you do? I'll get a divorce. I don't know what to do with the archive now. I only wrote out some of the potential vigilantes, all of them men, and we have to look among women. How do I get to the cases? Well, we have a lick for that. So do not worry, we'll get through. I think you need to rest, Anya. You need to sleep at last. Today is Friday. Friday. Veronica has already put off our meeting with Senka three times. In the end, we agreed to meet him tomorrow and take him for a couple of hours. Hello. I'm calling about tomorrow. I'll pick Senka up at 3 o'clock. Tomorrow. And you know I probably won't manage. We are going to the cinema and then to the park, so Senia won't think of you either. Listen, what are you inventing? What are you sculpting? Give Senya the phone, give Senya the phone. Please, Veronica, Veronica. Mom. Mom, why did you say that? It's not true. I always remember Daddy. So leave me alone and go clean your room. Why are you standing there? I said go clean your room. Mom, I want to tell Dad that I remember him. Okay. Listen, this man is no longer your father, do you understand? Don't talk about him anymore. He's nobody to you. Go clean your room, I said. Andre, forgive me again, if I had known then. Anya, do not worry. I'll go tomorrow and talk to Veronica. No, no, don't do that. Why not? She might call the police and you'll get an official ban. Then it will be much harder to fix everything. I have a plan, let me help you. Please. Okay, I'll call a cab. No need. I won't. Good morning. Good morning. How did we sleep? Do I dream about you? Now there is such a long forgotten feeling. What is it? I feel protected. I feel very good with you. And me with you. Alec. Alec. 
Hello, yes. Hi, I have a couple of your missed calls. Sorry I didn't hear. Listen, I have a favor to ask you. I need to pull up all of Anna's files. All of Anna's files? Yes, we're still looking. Understood. That's all, bye. Oh, youngsters, youngsters. It is in vain that you do not want to cooperate with the investigation. Avenia Algolna. It's in your interest. Your guilt is practically proved. You will still be in jail. But only the turn can be changed. Do you remember the phrase? A simple confession softens the punishment. Yes, remember you all the evidence against you. Those inconsistencies that allegedly found the previous investigator pulled by the years. But I'm as honest and objective as possible and I want to help you. Well. That's it. I'm preparing the case to go to court. That's it. Write a confession. Write a confession. Don't get yourself in jail. Write it. You have five minutes. Xenia. Look at me. Look at me. Your mother and the chief are doing everything to find the real killer. I'll help them with that. Under no circumstances sign anything. No confession. Understand? Understand? Anna Nikolaevna, hello, what brings you here? Hello, Veronica, you and I need to talk. I don't have time to talk right now. Sasha is waiting for me downstairs in the car. Can you imagine he's such a romantic? He invited me to dinner at a restaurant. It's so wonderful to feel a man's care and attention. It's not like expecting physical violence every minute. It's all thanks to you, thank you. Veronica, you tricked me, didn't you? What do you mean? Andre never hit you. He told you that? Didn't he? Of course you believed him. He never laid a finger on you. And I assert that he did as evidenced by the official medical report, as well as witness testimony, Alexander and also eloquent speech of my lawyer Sotnikova Anna Nikolaevna. Don't you know? It's a pity her speech in court created a furor. Veronica, let's agree, what is this? The neighbors are doing repairs. Open the door. No, open the door, I said. You have no right. This is private property. Get away from the door. Give me the keys, quick. Which one is it? Senya, my son, come here. 
You don't understand. I, it's just that he misbehaved and was punished. Are you hitting him? No, it's just that Seneca is a very active boy. He runs around by himself and hits everything. You're hitting the child and now you are going to leave for the restaurant by locking him in the dark. I would definitely come back. It was for preventative purposes. I'll make sure that you're deprived of parental rights. You don't understand. He just pisses me off. He does everything to spite me. If you ever lay a finger on him again, I'll lock you up to the jail. Yes. Vitaly Moranovic. Hello, take a sit. And I come to you from Veronica Levchenko. Yeah. Do you remember? I was her lawyer in the divorce proceedings. My name is Anna Sotnikova. Well, what can I do for you? You see, Vitaly Moranovic. One of my clients needs exactly the same certificate that you did at the time, Veronica. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you need me to witness a beating? Exactly. Would $500 suit you? <clears throat> you see, the thing is, the thing is that Veronika Maximova had already had a beating before. Yes, yes, of course I understand. Vitaly Moranovic, you understand that Veronika shared with me all the details. You have to be completely honest with a lawyer, just like with the doctor. Otherwise, you won't win the trial. Let's say $700. Well, that's different. Yes. You know, I didn't even make a mistake against reality. Yes, yes, of course. You know. And now we'll go the same way, okay. Well, fine. Then can I call her? Why is she here? Of course. Well, yes. Please. Good work, Anna. Captain Levchenko, I officially declare to you that this entire conversation was recorded and will now be used in court. Do you understand what I am saying? Yes, exactly. Okay, sit down and write. So what should I write? Do you know Veronika Levchenko? Write under what circumstances did you collude with her and gave her a fictitious medical certificate? By the way, doctor, was it your idea? No, of course not. She begged me. I would never have done it myself. This is it. Well, that's how you write, right, doctor, right? I write, right. Hi. Hi. I going to the archive. The archive is closed. There are proceedings in connection with the missing documents. I need a minute. Sorry, no way. Hello, Anna Nikolaevna. What didn't you expect? What does it mean? Well, and it means that the limit of dates this month you have exhausted. But I can think how to help you. If you remain reasonable, let me guess. I have to convince my daughter that a heartfelt confession will mitigate the punishment that awaits her. You're unusually perceptive. Nastia? What a cutie. He's so cute. Are you bringing him here? He's so cute. It's for you. For me? Yes, and candy too. What are you going to ask for? Hand and heart. It is Joe. 
Too bad. But I have a small request. Go ahead, jokester. Yes, Marina. Hi. Hi. I know who killed Roman. Who? I need to check this version. I want to discuss it with you. Can I come to you? Of course you can. You have two, Marin. And how are you doing? That Grishko turned down the date with Sinya, and I had to see her, you know, to make sure she's okay. Listen, I'm not far away. I can stop by and see if I can get her something. Marina, thank you very much. She likes orange juice. I'll text you everything. Thank you. Yes, got it. Okay, bye. Bye, bye. Hi, what are you doing here? Hi. I went to see Nasty in the archives. She has to bring me the rest of the cases. Where are you going? I'm going to Zenga's. Anya was not allowed to have a date and asked me to bring the transfer. And here's your Nastia. Bye. Bye. Here's Philip Cross, a foreigner or something. Or he's ours. Give me that. Philip Cross is a very familiar combination of name and surname. I remember him from somewhere. But where? Exactly. A year ago everything is correct. A man crashed in a car with a girl. Dima, our expert was still establishing whether there was a suicide or not. With a child in the car suicide? There was a very dark story there. A whole drama. The wife, the mistress, this girl who died, it was the daughter of the mistress. So it turns out that he is the husband of Anna's client. Alec, find me everything you can on the internet about the case, photos, addresses, everything. Come on in, Marina. How is she? Listen, Zenka is doing great. I did everything. I gave her the transmission. And she told me to tell you that she loves you very much. Marina, thank you, thank you. Anya, that's it. What about your version? Listen, I think Roman was killed by Valia. Valentina? Yes. His housekeeper? Yes, out of jealousy. Come on. She was secretly in love with him. Look, he seduced her, took advantage of her, and then threw her out of this relationship. So here's the deal. Here she came to clean up after the party, and in fact she convinced the police that Zinka was the murderer. And then why did she then tell Andre that the woman who came to Roman's house in the morning was just like Sinya? Then the blue car, the alibi. Valentina's alibi at the time of the murder. No, Marin, I'm sorry, but it's nothing. Sit down, let's have tea. And where do you have it? Second door down the corridor. So tea. Well. Thank God. Marina, Marina, you have a message. My video recorder filmed the murder of Roman Tishchenko. 
I'm ready to give you the video for a fee here. The map is attached in the fishing lodge number two, but I warn you no police or the recorder will be destroyed. Who's that? I do not know. That's it. I'm going. Yourself. I will not put you down. No, Marin. I don't want to risk it. It could be the killer. I don't think so. He wouldn't leave such traces if you could just get away quietly. Well, that makes sense. Look, I'll go with you. It would be more peaceful for me. Okay, I'll take the money and call Andre. Of course, Anya. It says here in the it seems no police. Andre is a policeman. How about some more coffee? No, thanks. Thank you. And here is Philip Cross. Here's the article right away. And here's Lubav Yakovlev the Cross. She is wife. So stop, stop. So this is probably his mistress. Marina. Wow, do we have to walk or something? Apparently so, but it's not far, straight ahead. Chief, I remembered. I saw Marina today. She came to see Zania in the detention center. Marina. So let's go to the detention center quickly, quickly, quickly. Got it. It looks like here. Senya Demot. She has a pulse, thank God. Call an ambulance quickly. Pasha, when they come, tell them not to touch anything on the table. Alec, Alec, Alec. Yes. We need to find an on the radio signal. Act quickly. Got it. Hold on, hold on, dear. You have a pulse, thank God. A message. From who? From Andre. Chief, we're not far away now. We'll find them quickly. By the way. Good job. Are you awake? Get up and sit at the table. Quickly. Well, according to the map there are two objects. An abandoned boat station and a fishing lodge, the station is closer. So let's start there. Well, let's go at a pace. Right. My life has lost its meaning. Right. I said. 
I have made many mistakes in my life, and for that I was punished because my daughter turned out to be a murderer. Why are you doing this? Does the name Philip Cross mean anything to you? You defended his wife during the divorce. Yes, I remember. Did she know that he died in an accident? He hit a wall at full throttle. Our daughter was in the car with him. I lost both of them in the same day. I'm sorry, Marina. Because of you, I lost them. Did you want that for what? To nail him? You wanted to expose him. Because of you, he gave his assets to his wife, who is just a brainless chicken. But you're always on the side of hurt and humiliated stupid women. And Philip and I, we love each other and we had a baby. And we could have lived a long and happy life together. I think there's more to check out. What do I have to do with the accident? The most direct. Because of you, he lost everything. The lawyer called and told him about it when he was picking up our daughter from school. And Philip was so stressed that he just couldn't handle the steering in the car. But he might not have gotten behind the wheel. Shut up. At first I wanted to kill myself, and then I decided it wouldn't be right to leave without getting revenge. You want to know what happened? How I managed to fool you? I changed my surname. And then I went over your life inside and out. I bet on Gordiev. But when I saw that this idiot still loved you, I found Roman, who was the perfect accomplice, silly enough but with a terribly inflated ego. I came to him with a concrete offer to punish you, and he went off the deep end. He really liked to make fun of you and your daughter. This idiot didn't even realize that he was playing the role of a corpse in my play, and when I told him to take everyone out, he didn't even ask what it was. He liked to lead you by the nose so much. It was you who made a circus in the parking lot on behalf of Lucian. And then I heroically saved you, didn't I? How did I earn your infinite trust? And you blackmailed Boris. It was terribly fun. I played on his fear for my own skin. And I gave the money to this kid, fear of one and greed of the other great helpers. Too bad the kid got away. Even if you'd run Dennis to his death, we'd still be on to you. Even if you'd run Dennis to his death, we'd still be on to you. And your beloved Andre is out, but he can't prove anything. It won't change anything. And it won't save you because you'll rot at the bottom of the river with a bullet in your skull. But before you do, I want you to feel what it's like to lose your daughter. You're sick. Marina, you need treatment. 
and I won't lose my daughter. She'll be acquitted. It makes no difference. Your daughter is dead. Xenia is gone. Yes. I poisoned her. Finish it. Or I'll put a hole in your head right now. Why do you need this letter? The police already know the whole truth anyway. You're a lawyer. You know better than anyone the magic power of paper. You can't get away, a lot of details will come out. For example this gun, where did I get it? I took it from the thing docks to which you had access, besides, it will have your fingerprints on it. And this place? Why did I decide to shoot myself here? Oh, it's simple. A week ago you wrote me an email that you looked for a house that you wanted to buy. And when Zenya is acquitted, you bring her here. They say the nature heals and all that. I did not send you such a letter. Right. I sent it with your almost and deleted it and it remained in my inbox. Write it now. Marina had dropped the gun. I'm not kidding, drop the gun away. Okay. Drop the gun, shoot to kill. Freeze. Doctor, will I live? Yes, you'll be fine. Thank you. You have five minutes? He's still very weak. Daddy, I knew you wouldn't leave me. I will never leave you. Never, you remember that. Hit one and two. Well done. Everyone is waiting for you at work. Colonel Kalyuzny asks every day how you are. Frolov, by the way, was jailed. He was really in charge of the internal investigation department. But Kalyuzny just couldn't tell you the truth. It's a secret operation. Senya, let's go interrogate the nurses when we can get the file out of here. Go, son. Go, I'm sorry, I'm like this. The doctor said everything will be fine now. How long have I been here? Ten days. Ten days. All that time the doctors have been fighting for your life. How is Zinka? Everything is fine. You made it in time. And Marina? Her guilt has been proven and she is now facing a life sentence and a criminal case has been opened against Veronica for child abuse. While the proceedings are going on, you get custody of Senya. Anya, I'm so grateful to you. And I don't understand why you've been messing with me so much. Because I love you. Really? Yes.